to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. These are the Apostle Paul's words of encouragement to the elders of the church of Christ in Miletus as he was about to depart and see them no more. Today we're thinking about some of the most encouraging verses in all the Bible and how, how encouraging it is that we have the Word of God that can build us up in times of struggle and difficulty. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our wonderful study today of encouragement. If you don't have your Bible out and ready, please take a moment to get your Bible, have it ready as we're going to be looking at these wonderful verses that encourage us from the Word of God together. As always, our broadcast today is brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ, the Lord's Church in your local area. We'd love for you to stop by and visit the church in your area, whether it be for worship on Sunday or the Bible study on Wednesday. There'll be people there who love God, who are kind and friendly, and who are just simply concerned about doing what God says in His Word. And so please visit the Lord's Church in your local area. Also, my friend, we'd love to help you here at the Gospel of Christ and your desire to know God and His will better. You can visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our free material. Uh, audio lessons, video lessons, written materials, study guides, questions, tra answers, transcripts, just a good plethora of Bible study material that we'd love for you to visit and check out. And so check us out, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of our lesson today on this lesson on encouragement or any of our previous lessons, go to our website, fill out a free media request form. You can choose for a digital download or a DVD or CD if those are necessary as well, and we'll send that to you free of charge. And friend, as always, we encourage you to check us out on Facebook as well and the things we're doing there. And don't forget about the Gospel of Christ app for our fast-paced world today where everybody's got a smartphone. It is a great way to study the Word of God and stay connected with what we're doing and receive updates uh, to our new lessons and things like that as well. And so we're just glad that you joined us for our study today. Let's think about several verses from the Bible that offer the child of God so much hope and so much encouragement in a world that is often... Think about this with me. If you were to watch Go Home Today and you were to watch the news, the local media outlets, whatever your news may be, how much of it would be positive and encouraging and get you excited about it? Well, you'd probably hear about a lot of evil. You'd probably hear a lot about discouraging things. You'd probably hear a, a lot of things that are designed to frighten you in some way and sensationalize the problems that exist. And much of what you see on the internet or television as it relates to news, we wouldn't call that encouraging. It's very discouraging in some ways and very depressing. The good news is the Word of God is designed to encourage and to build us up. Think about this verse again. Acts chapter 20, verse number 32. The apostle Paul said to the elders in Ephesus, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. When we think about this idea, we realize that God's grace and mercy and hope is what we need to do and to say and to live the best life possible. It's the Word of God that can build each and every one of us up and make us fit for the kingdom of God. 
And so that word is designed to help and encourage us in every way. As we think about that hope and as we think about that help, let's realize what a joy that is. Now, I want to mention some of these verses, and I hope these verses will bring encouragement and comfort to your life and to mine. The first verse that we'd like to notice that brings a lot of encouragement is Psalm 103, verse number 10. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. This reminds us of the forgiveness of God. Listen to the beauty of this verse. He's not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. How, how beautiful a picture that is of God. You see, when I think about this verse, I realize I didn't get what I deserved for my sins. You didn't get. If you're a child of God, you didn't get what you deserved for your sins. In, in fact, I got the exact opposite. Because of God, by grace are you saved through faith. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Instead of being punished for my sins, the wages of sin is death. The soul who sins shall surely die. Ezekiel 18 4. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Instead of being punished for my sins, I've been forgiven of them by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, when I think about this idea, I can't help but think of how much Jesus did for each one of us to have that hope and that joy in our life. He, he willingly gave himself on the cross for me and you. He suffered in agony. So the, he, listen to this, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. What a beautiful and encouraging thought that I didn't get what I deserved. You know, we talk about the idea of someone being acquitted. We talk about the idea of someone being let go of charges. Maybe it was their first offense. Maybe they... They learned from the lesson. Maybe it were, they were extenuating, and they, they got off without having to do time. They got off with just community service or probation. Man, we think that person got off good. That was good. You know, Maybe they'll learn from that. Friend, when we think about what we got, how it ought to encourage and help us as it relates to the nature of our God. A second passage that is so encouraging, I think, is found in Psalm 23. Listen to these beautiful words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's a reason this psalm is read so often at gravesides and, and times of loss because we're reminded that during those dark times, we're not going to have to walk it alone. The Lord's our shepherd. What's a shepherd? A shepherd is someone who stays with the sheep, someone who cares for them, someone who protects them, someone who through the darkness is right there at the door of the gate, not going to let anyone in. It's a sense of hope and protection involved in that. The shepherd provides for his sheep, leads me to green pastures, leads me beside the still waters, all the sustenance you need, he provides. And friend, that's so true. God, God provides our every need, doesn't he? Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of righteousness. And when we have to walk through those difficult times, we don't have to fear evil. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, that's not the comforting part. That's the, that's the picture and that's the scene. Here's the comforting part. Why is it that when I walk through that dark valley, the valley of the shadow of death, why is it that when I walk through that dark, treacherous, dangerous valley that I don't have to fear 
Listen to these words. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I don't fear during those times because God's right there with me. He's going to bring comfort. His rod and his staff, his tools of defense and protection are going to take care of us if we are in Christ. If the blood of Jesus has been applied to our spirit, the valley of the shadow of death is not that dark, evil day. In fact, the Bible says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the uh, the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. That, that day that the world looks at as a dark, dreadful day. God's with us. He's going to comfort and strengthen us in those times. We don't have to fear that type of evil. He is constantly preparing a table before us and his goodness and his mercy are with us all the days of our life. And that motivates us. Think about what that does. In view of all those things from Psalm 23, that motivates us. I want to continue to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then some other passages. Psalm 46, verse number 1, is such an encouraging passage. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. When you think of refuge, what do you think of? Well, when you think of a refuge, you think about a place of, of safety and a place of shelter. Maybe there's been a storm that's come through and you found refuge. You could feel safe. You could feel protected. You could be warm and dry in that environment and have everything in life that you would need for your security there. For the Christian, where is that place of safety? You, God, is our refuge. God is where we run. God is where we hide. God is that storm shelter in the times of difficulty in our life. You're our refuge and strength. One of the things that zaps our strength the most is when we face the problems of life, when we face difficulty and depression and death and disease and sickness and, and sin. It just kind of zaps your spiritual vitality. Where do you go for that strength to be renewed? Well, we know that the Lord renews our strength. He, he, he builds us back up. He strengthens us through His Word. And listen to this beautiful phraseology. God is a very present help in time of trouble. There's almost some overemphasis there. Very present. He's right there, uh, immediate, ready to help. It reminds me of Hebrews 4, verse 13. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help in time of need. Friend, it's encouraging to know that we have a, a shelter that we can run to. It's a place that is ready and available, and God is willing and able to help us in our time of need. Here's another encouraging passage. I love the words of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. Casting all your care upon Him, He cares for you. I believe the old King James Version says, cast all your anxiety upon Him. In essence, the word care at the first part and care at the last part or a play on words. Cast all your anxiety upon him, he's anxious for you, or cast all your care upon him, he cares for you. It's a play on words. We take our cares, we hurl, the word cast means to, it's like you're throwing them, you're hurling them, you're giving them to God as it were. We cast our problems, our cares to God, and God cares for us enough to help us with those problems. And so let's think about this. Some of those powerful words in all the human language, English language, human language, are, I love you. Friend, the Bible right here tells us that God does that. God says, you let me help you with your problems, your anxieties, the difficulties you face. I care for you. What a beautiful, tender statement that is. It reminds me of what, what the Bible says about Hezekiah, when Hezekiah wept bitterly because he thought his life was about to an end, uh, come to an end, God said, I've heard your prayers. I've seen your tears. Isn't that a moving passage? We can cast all our cares upon God. God, listen to this. God cares deeply for you and me. 
I have been made in the image of God, and so have you. Genesis 1 verse 27. Man is the pinnacle of God's creation. Uh, God breathed in the man the breath of life, and man became a living being. Genesis 2 verse 7. Jesus would say, if evil fathers know how to give their children good gifts, how much more the heavenly father? God's going to take care of his own, and he's going to care for you in each and every way. Now let's talk about one of my favorite encouraging verses in the Bible. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 13, and I want you to look in your Bible in verses 5 and 6. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Why? For he himself, God himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I don't have to live a life where I'm looking for comfort and security and, and, and contentment in things. Why, why do people hoard up and collect so much things? Because they, they look to that for their comfort and their strength and their contentment. If I've got X number of this and I've got a collection of this and I've got all these things saved up, then all my possessions are going to bring me comfort and security and contentment and solve all my problems. Well, no, that, that, that's just not the case. Let your life be without covetousness. You learn to be content. Christians, learn to be content with what you have. Well, how can I learn to be content? Because you have something far greater and brings far greater contentment than anything in the world. The Lord himself has said. What, what makes you content? The Lord has said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? God gives us help. He, he, he's, he's where we find true contentment, the, the, the stuff and the things of this world. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Putting your hope and your contentment in stuff, it's not going to last. Because those things are not going to last. But if we put our hope and our contentment, Paul would say, I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. Why, Paul? It is certain we brought nothing into this world and we'll take nothing with us. Having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. Learn contentment, not based on the things of this world, but based on God. The Lord your helper. God will never, if you remain faithful to God, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And you can say with confidence, Lord's my helper. I'm not going to be afraid. What can man do to me? Regardless of what man does to you, if you're faithful unto death, friend, you've, you've lived the best life and you've done everything possible to please the Lord. And on that great day, you'll have the opportunity as a Christian to hear the words, well done. Good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Let's think about just a few more verses that offer a lot of hope and encouragement in times of struggle. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 is probably one of the most beautiful verses in all the Bible. The scripture says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. This verse reminds me of how much Jesus gave up. The, if you're a child of God, every day you're fighting, you're running the race, you're striving to be faithful unto death so that one day you can go to heaven and live with God. The very place every day that we are fighting to go, Jesus left that so that I could go there. Consider the grace of our Lord. He was rich. He, he was in heaven. Yet for your sake, he did it for you. Your sakes, he became poor. He came to this earth, didn't even have a place to lay his head or call his own. And he, he did all that, that through his poverty, we might be made rich. Out of the ivory palaces, the psalmist said, 
And Jesus definitely came out of those ivory palaces, lived as a pauper, gave up everything you could imagine, all so that one day we could share in his glory and his riches. Friend, we talk about encouragement and motivation. If that doesn't motivate us, we're going to have a hard time getting motivated at all. Psalm 116, verse 15. What a beautiful passage this is. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Outside of sickness and disease and, and problems, uh, man in, man's inhumanity to man, one of the things that often bothers us the most is that day of finality that all of us will face, death. But you know, for a Christian, it's not that way. What's heaven's perspective on the death of one of God's children? Precious. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. From a, from a worldly perspective, that day is looked at as dark and dreadful, and we've got to do whatever we can to prolong our life here and prevent that. That's not the way heaven sees it. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Then as we think about words of encouragement, we know why that's precious because of what Jesus did. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any was in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. It's precious because Christ has made us new. Think about all the things you... Wouldn't it be great to get a redo? Wouldn't it be great to start over? Just to kind of erase the board clean it up, and start over again. Well, we'd all love to do that at times in our life, especially times where we said or did something that we really, really regret. If anyone's in Christ, that's happened. He's a new creation. Old things, everything in the old man, in the old life, in the sinful past, old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. You get a second chance. As a child of God, you get a do-over, as it were, because your sins have been forgiven and you're no longer living for self and sin and Satan. You're living for God. And he does give us a beautiful second chance. You see, this is what's beautiful about God. The Bible says of God in 1 Timothy 2, 4, who desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. God's universal love and salvation is such an encouraging factor. God is not concerned with where man often puts the emphasis. Physique, height, intellect, social status, racial status, wherever we may come from, how much money we've got, how powerful a person he is. God wants all men everywhere to be saved and come to a knowledge that no one is as unbiased and unprejudiced as Almighty God. He sent his son to taste death for every man. Hebrews 2 verse 9. He wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Let's consider one last verse, which offers us a lot of hope and a lot of encouragement as we live faithful to Jesus. To suffering saints in the area of Asia Minor in the first century. Jesus said this, Do not fear any of those things which you're about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. You'll have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The hope we all have is that as if we're in Jesus because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, because of Jesus' death on the cross and everything God did, we remain faithful to the Lord. One day, we'll have the crown of life. There's encouragement because of this. If I trust Jesus, if I stay true to Him, if I live according to His will and don't give up when things get difficult, I'll have the privilege of hearing, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Won't it be wonderful to be in that place Jesus went to prepare for us? John 14, verses 1 through 6. Paul said in Romans 8, 18, I consider the sufferings of this present time. They're not even worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. My friend, heaven will truly be worth it all. 
those Christians, some of them, the idea of Revelation 2.10 is not keep living faithful until death, but more like some of you are about to die. The, the persecution is so severe and there's a chance that some of you are going to be martyred for the cause of Christ. Don't give up and you'll have the crown of life. It was a more of an immediacy in that. And friend, that needs to be our mindset and our attitude, regardless of what happens tomorrow. If I remain faithful to the Lord, I'll have that crown of life. And so friend, we ask you today, do you find your encouragement and hope in the word of God? If you're a child of God, you definitely can find your encouragement and your hope in his word. If you're not a Christian, we're pleading with you today to become a child of God. Have you heard the message about Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life? Do you believe that message with all your heart? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Are you willing to put your trust in Jesus as the savior of the world? Would you be willing to turn from a life of sin in repentance to God? Acts 3, verse 19, Peter said, repent and turn that your sins may be blotted out. Having turned from a life of sin, would you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior? With the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And friend, having done those things, would you be immersed in water to have every sin washed away and to get into Jesus? Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved, Mark 16, 16. Our Lord said, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so we're so glad today that you've joined us for our study of these encouraging verses. We hope that they have been encouragement to each of us, and we encourage you to join us next time as we'll study more from God's divine word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.